Welcome back to a Bakken tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Cybernetic Possum who wants to add custom enemies and animations. If you want your tutorial idea expedited on one of my videos, consider to join Patreon where I take monthly requests. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so this is Orb Stories, the sample project that Bakken comes with. This is that little desert scene where you can fight some stuff in. And by default, Bakken comes with a dozen or so uh, enemy sprites, but they're all single sprites. They're just an idol. So when you're fighting, say, this wizard, the characters attack and stuff, but the enemies actually don't. They just kind of stay idle with the little flashing. So we're going to uh, change this. First off, we're going to add a new enemy to see how that's done. And then we're going to add like an attack animation, a when it takes damage animation, and a KO animation. And so we're going to uh, get started with that. So first, it's important to know what animations you can plan for. So when I was thinking of an enemy, I wanted to know what animations I can plan for. And if you go to their wiki, you can kind of see some of the animations that you can uh, can have. And you can also view these in the editor here. You can go to the resources. Whoops, that's database. We can go to the resources and we can click on a 2D stamp and we can click on the one of the casts here. So just elf A. And we can see like that's walk, that's weight, that's run. Um, this is guard. This will be damage. And we can kind of turn that over like that. This is a KO. And then we have stuff like attack. And here's just a normal attack, just like this. So we can use these uh, keywords as things. So for my enemy, I'm going to want a weight. I'm going to want an attack. And then I'm going to want a KO. And then let's just do a damage as well. So when you hit the enemy. So if you do need to know what they all are, you can go into the editor here and just kind of check out their defaults, or you can go to the wiki and kind of see at least what the names are. All right, so to add a new one, we're going to go to the images here at first, and we're going to click add. And I have a set that I've made. I have a demon enemy I'm gonna add, and you can see I have the weight, the KO, the damage, and the attack. I'm just gonna select them all from my local files, and I'm gonna click add and exit. And it's going to add them right here. And I want to change some of these settings. So with all of them selected, I'm going to add this sRGB right here. I'm going to change them to nearest. And then I'm going to change them to uh, count slice. But they're all going to be different. So now I'm going to click on one at a time. And this one's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to add a six on the X. And it should properly slice it up. Go to damage, I'm gonna add two. Go to KO, this one is three. Go to weight, and this one is a six as well. All right, so with our resources added as images, now I'm gonna go to the slice animation. And by the way, this is just the easiest way I kind of found it for workflow to, to make sense order of operations for me. I'm gonna go to the slice animations here, and I'm going to add. And we're going to add out of that, I'm just going to do the first one called Demon Weight. And I'm going to add that one. And we're going to go, click OK on this. Now it's going to come up with the same name. Now I'm going to actually change this to be called uh, Demon Motions. And I just felt like that made sense to me for what we're going to do next. And so then we're going to go down here and pull this out first. And we don't want this to be a Demon Weight right here. Again, we want it according to this style. So we want weight. Now the weight doesn't matter if it's capital or W. The only one I found to matter if it's capital or not is the KO. If you do lowercase KO, it will not work, but the cap, it needs to be capital KO. So I'm going to change this to weight. And then I'm just gonna make sure everything is fine. So the, the looping is good. I want it to loop on this idle. And then I want, um, I want it to be a little faster though, maybe. So let's go 150. And that's good right there. Now, the other thing is that this is a, it's a pretty small image. If I was to show you in game, it'd be pretty small. So I already automatically know that I need to scale it, which you can do right up here. You can scale it. So that, that will look a lot better in our game. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add motions. And we're going to go, uh, go to here. We got to click on images. And then I'm going to add attack, damage, and KO. And I'm going to add them. And there we go. And I might have been able to add them all at the same time, but just in case, you know, you can add motions right here. So here's the attack. I'm going to click on, 
I'm going to, or sorry, rename it attack. Now this one, I don't want it to loop. I just want it to hit one time and then stop. So I'm going to actually change this to none. And then I do want it to go a little faster. So I'm going to, let's try 100. And so in order to replay it, you just click on it down here. So that's pretty good. So I'll just leave it like that for now. If we need to change it, I can just come back here and change it. I'm going to click on this one and name it damage. And again, I don't want this one to loop either. I just want it to be none. And let's see here. Yeah, that should work. Except for I am going to make it a little longer delay. So let's go 600 and see what that looks like. And let's go 400. Because I want them to stay in that, that little hit like that. Yeah, perfect. All right, and then we're going to go to KO. And like I said, this one needs to be a capital like this. And I do not want this to loop. And I want it to go a little bit slower. Let's try 150. Uh, maybe a little faster. 125. And there we go. We'll see how it looks. We can always come back and adjust it. But it, that scale was for the whole motion. So that, that worked out good. And you could call this animations, I guess. But I guess they're called motions here. But the thing's called animation. So I don't know. The naming. I'm, I don't have a good naming system yet. <laughs> but you, you'll, you'll be able to get it. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to 2D stamps, and now we're going to create the actual demon. So this is where you create the demon. We'll go to, well, we could go to monsters here, I guess, but uh, just to make it easy, actually, I'm gonna do it on the outside here. I'm gonna add, and from here, I'm gonna select from the animations, and we have the demon motions, and then I'm gonna add that. So now that is gonna create, I think it's gonna be called demon motions, and then this one is actually going to be called, I'm going to rename it. And this one is going to be actually called the demon. So this is what you're going to select from basically. And it's going to have all the motions and everything like that. Now we could uh, change the uh, collisions if we wanted to and stuff like this, but it's a battler and I'm not sure how collisions work with battlers. But one thing to consider actually that I was finding is that you want the ground of the sprite. So for example here, you want the feet to be as close to the bottom of the sprite cell as possible. So this sprite actually came a little up like this. And so it will be floating in the editor. It will be floating like up here if you did it like that. And so I'm not sure of a way of in the editor to fix that, but for a, a manual fix, you just make sure that the whole sprite sheet is down as low as you can right there. Hopefully something comes up with how to maybe do that in the editor because uh, some of these individual uh, sprite sheets you get from asset stores are kind of problematic when you're trying to implement them in here. But yeah, so we have our 2D stamp, we have everything ready to go. Let's go ahead and create our enemy. So in order to create it, we got to go to the database now, in which case we're going to go to the cast because that's what we want. Now, one easy way I would suggest is you can find what type of a preset they have that you like with all the equipment and effects and stuff like this. And you could actually just, you know, copy and paste it and then just change out the graphic. But just for, you know, learning purposes, we'll create a new one on this one. And we're going to select from the 2D stamps and the demon. It's right there. Now you might have this in a folder, but I don't. So we're just going to add this demon and it's going to, I think it auto does the weight. So we should be good on that one as far as the, the motion goes there. But with this, uh, this cast added, let's just add it to the scene and start testing it slowly, okay? So I'm gonna add this by the goblin because if I do want some reference, I'm, it's gonna be the goblin. So I'm gonna have some quick clicking to, to reference real quick. All right, so let's add them to the scene as far as an enemy to get attacked with. And let's go to map settings right here and enemy distribution. Now I have lowered the min and the max right here to five and five. So five steps, I'll get a battle. And right now the default is wizard and a snake. So I'm going to remove these and then I'm going to add a monster and it's going to be the demon. I'm going to add it, click okay. And I'm going to click uh, play test and we'll see what this looks like. All right, so there is our demon. It looks really good just right off the bat. And again, that two, 100% scale really makes it, you could imagine it, how small it would be. So now if I click attack and I hit it, 
it's going to do the, the hit animation. But it's not going to do an attack animation yet. And actually, I think it tried to escape or whatever. But it did do a KO animation. So that, that's cool. So let's, uh, let's get the rest of this going for the enemy. All right, so back in the database, we are going to go to the demon here. And first off, let's give it some attack power because it's not going to hit the player at all. And matter of fact, if you go to the goblin here, you can see the attack power is about 80. So about 80 is what I'm going to give it to start. Or let's just give it 75, let's say. And then the basic showed zero on, on the goblin. So I'm also going to change it to zero on this demon here. And again, that's why I wanted it by the goblin so I can kind of reference it a little bit. And so now we're going to go to equipment and stuff. And there wasn't really any equipment that I needed to add. The battles, this is where I kind of want to uh, do some stuff. For instance, there are no skills for it, so I'm going to say none. There are no items that it can use, so I'm going to say none as well. There is an attack here, and but we're going to actually add the attack down here. So we're going to add, and it's going to be none. And this means that it doesn't take any turns to, or, or sorry, it doesn't take any conditions to do this attack. And we're going to do type attack. And that's just exactly what it's going to be. So let's just try this and let's see how this works. So we'll do uh, another test here. And so we have our demon. We hit it. It does the attack. And then it does the attack animation to, to, to me. And then we go like this and it dies. All right. So another option that you might want is you can make it not visible when it dies. And so if we play test this one, I don't know if you noticed on when your enemies die, if they don't have a KO animation, they'll just disappear automatically. If they do have a KO animation, they will wait till that KO animation is done and then they'll disappear. So we can see that right here, the KO happens, but the enemy doesn't go away. The HUD does, but the enemy doesn't. So you might want that. Uh, if you rewind the video a little bit, you'll see in the previous one, it faded out when this results screen came up. All right, so let's look at some more here. The other things that I'll just go over is this others, this is for like generations and stuff like this, but the effects you might want to add. So for instance, when you, um, when you hit the enemy with your attack, you might want to add a, a hit animation. And so we could literally just do uh, battle effects. And there's a whole lot of them right here. So we could do a slash. Let's just uh, see what these, and you can actually preview them. There you go. Let's just do this slash right here. Yeah, let's just do this normal slash. And then the effect on the KO. So there there are like hits and stuff like this, but there's, there's some uh, ones down here, defeat. Yeah, this one. This one is what I think the normal enemies use. And so I'll just add that one as well. So now you have for attack here and then the KO. So let's go to uh, view this. And now when the enemy attacks the player, you should see that slash effect. So we'll hit him and then he'll hit me with that slash effect. Awesome. And then when we hit the KO, there'll be a particle effect that goes off. All these other options, you'll just have to kind of explore and get used to. You can always add uh, more things and you can specify conditions. You can say this can only happen on turn this to this, um, all these sorts of different things. So there's a lot more options to go over, but this is how you just create a new enemy, get it onto your map, as well as with some custom animations. And so thanks Cybernetic Possum for that Patreon request. And if you have any questions, comments below, Steam Forms will get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.